welcome to our Good Friday service. We're very excited about you being here and being a part of our Good Friday service. We want to talk about uh, today, and we want to welcome all you that are watching online, our online church family and our friends. And, and if you're just however you got to this, uh, to watch this, we welcome you. And uh, we also have a, this on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and many other areas that you can follow us on. We'd like you to subscribe and be a part of our family so we can be able to uh, <clears throat> let you know about other things that we're going on or when we're coming on live at any other uh, any time uh, during the day. So uh, get connected with us and uh, pray for us, and we're going to believe God for some supernatural things to happen. If you have your Bibles with you today, let's just jump into the Word right now on this Good Friday, jump into the Word. So look with me in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and verse 18. I'm going to read it out of two translations. I'm going to read it out of the King James Version. Then I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. So 1 Corinthians 1, 18. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to start at verse 17. 1, 17, it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, uh, not with the wisdom of words, but lest the cross of Christ should be made of non-effect. Verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. That just gets me so excited. It is the power of God. We don't hear a lot about the teaching on the cross, but it is one of the most powerful teachings, I think, that you could hear to help your faith get uh, stimulated, keep you excited about your destiny, God's purpose for your life, God's plan for your life uh, in every aspect, the teaching of the cross. One more time, I'm going to read out to King James. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. So we ain't trying to, you know, make everybody happy, but for those that are, want to hear it, that want to receive a revelation of truth, then this is what you need to hear. And it says, <clears throat> uh, but it says, and, but unto us who are believers, who uh, put our faith in God, but unto us uh, which are saved, it is the power of God. I truly believe that the greater revelation that you have of the cross, the greater revelation that you have of the cross, the greater uh, your faith is going to be, the greater the miracle signs and wonders are going to be in your life, the greater manifestation of God's glory will be seen because of your recognition of the power of the cross. <clears throat> I put down in my notes that, that the, the cross is a symbol of triumph for the believer. It is a triumphant sign of the believer. The cross also bears witness of God's infinite love and towards sinful man. It is a, a powerful witness of God's love for us. Uh, Sometimes we can't see it because it was the cross represents the crucifixion. It represents uh, the death of our Savior. Uh, it represents uh, the torture and how sinful man can be so uh, mean. But the cross is much more than a symbol. It possesses spiritual power. It's something about that connecting yourself and recognizing. You know, what, what sort of tickles me, uh, if I can say that, uh, it, see, the cross has now uh, become sort of a, 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 um, just a, something people wear and without any revelation of what the cross means. And people just wear them. And I, when I see somebody wearing a cross, I say, oh, uh, how long have you been a Christian? Uh, how long have you been living for God? And they say, oh, no, I'm just wearing the cross. Uh, I, I, I like it because it's a, it's a fad. But this to me, this cross represents everything to do with life, and with greater things that God wants to do in your life. I want to read it out the Living Bible right now uh, also. And out the Living Bible. And it says, and the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction. Thank God that's not none of you. 
and his show ain't me no more, but I was show headed for the destruction. But it says, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. You know, when I think about uh, the cross and about all that went on, the significance of it, that how that this cross was supposed to be the most humiliating, the most destructive, the most fearful, uh, dreadful thing that ever could happen to somebody. And God turned it around to make it the most spiritual and most powerful uh, weapon uh, against the work of enemy when we understand and have revelation about it. So I put on here that the significance of the cross is not uh, designed or a construction for our purpose, but it is a symbol of Satan's eternal defeat. Satan is eternally defeated because of the cross and what Jesus did on that cross. But also, it's a symbol of Jesus' death and also a symbol of the fact that Jesus died for our sins that we could be forgiven. Now, I don't know how much you, that really resonates with you, but I am so thankful that Jesus went to the cross uh, to be my sin substitute, to be my re reconciliation, that he could bring peace between me and God and bring me into fellowship, back into relationship and get all the original things that God intended before the fall and before sin entered into the world, according to Romans 5 and 12. It says sin entered into the world God never intended for mankind to suffer and to experience all the dreadful, demonic, destructive things that are going on in our society today, even dealing with now this coronavirus. That is not God's plan. Jesus defeated Satan on the cross. He bore our sins. You know, I was even thinking about this uh, on my way coming in today about the death of Christ. You know, uh, what is... Uh, what gives, uh, uh, what is the uh, deaf, what gives deaf a, a reason to interact or to get involved in your life and it's because of sin. Sin is the, the key for deaf to be able to enter in. So all mankind now has been placed under death because of the sin of Adam. And now Jesus came who was sinless, listen to this, who was sinless, who came to die for sinful man without sinning. <laughs> well, how do, you, how, do, how do you do that? He, he came to bear the sin of mankind, but without sinning, and, and death could not even take place in his life until to sin entered into his life, but he did not sin. But when he was on the cross for you and I, he, then our sins was placed upon him. They then gave, made him then to have a door where death could come in and take him. But death had no place and could not do anything until sin entered in his life, but he did not sin. It was our sin that was placed upon him. So now that uh, through that, now death has been defeated because he uh, uh, <laughs> because he rose from the grave. So the 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 triumphantness of of the resurrection, uh, as we're going to be getting into on the Easter Sunday, is the resurrection is triumphant over death. Death death was a final territory or the final. Word had the final word, but it had no more final word because when Jesus died on this cross and he sin was placed up on him and really he didn't really just he gave it up, you know, but it, but death had the right to be able to enter into his life. But then he showed that death still did not have the last word when he rose up on the third day. I, I'm just going to give myself a shout. Hey. <clears throat> and uh, but so exciting about it. And understanding that now that I can say I'm forgiven, 
because of the cross and because of what Jesus did and what he bore for me, he bore it all for me on the cross. He bore my sins. He gave me forgiveness. He brought, he d delivered me from condemnation and delivered me from uh, a sin consciousness and brought me into a proper relationship and fellowship with Almighty God as being my reconciler. He reconcil reconciliation is he tore down the wall of petition and brought in the peace of God that I can enter into fellowship and relationship with Almighty God. Amen, amen. So the cross probably is the most really recognized symbol uh, that is so significant to all of mankind being able to have the right to be delivered from the power of death. You know, the scripture says, let me just run over here real quickly. L let me show you something. In the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, the second chapter, and this is, we're talking about Good Friday today. Hebrews, the second chapter. Uh, okay, look, Hebrews 2, and look at me in verse 14. Hebrews 2 and verse 14. And look what it says here in Hebrews 2, 14. It's for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, it says, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through what? That through what? That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. Man, I'm telling you, this is, we might be getting a little too deep for y'all. Huh? That had the power of death, that is the devil. He broke the power of the most dreadful thing that the devil had to hold people in bondage and destroy life was the power of death. And Jesus destroyed the power of him. He doesn't have the power of death over us anymore. Look what it says. It says, uh, and delivered. So you need to circle that. And delivered them who through the fear of death, you need to underline it, who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to the what? Bondage. See, what is the big thing about dealing with this coronavirus? Now, people are afraid about dying. They're afraid they're going to get something that's going to kill them. No, no, listen, man, we don't have to be afraid of something that God has already delivered us from. I'm not saying that you don't have to still wash, don't have to wash your hands or be careful about putting your hands in your face. I'm just saying we're not going to be in fear of it. We're not going to be in bondage to it. We're not going to let it control our life. We're declaring that he whom the Son has set free. Hallelujah to God has, has, is free indeed. And so we're not going to allow the enemy to be able to hold us in bondage. Look what it says here. For verily I, he, he took on him uh, the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. He could have took on him the nature of angels, but he took on the seed of Abraham. That's us. <coughs> and then he says we're... Wherefore, in all things, you need to put brackets around it, in all things it behooved him to be made uh, like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining unto God to make what? Reconciliation, or to, that word reconciliation is to bring peace between us and God. So making peace for the sins of the people. Look at verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted or that are, have the fear of death and all those different things along that line. So the cross, the cross is a symbol of God's sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed on the cross. It is a symbol of the his sacrifice and what he made for us. It's also a symbol of, of his love for us and his, him giving of himself for us. So the cross itself uh, did not make salvation, <coughs> did not make salvation, but it was the shedding of his perfect blood, his sinless and spotless lamb of God on the cross for us, uh, so that our sins could be forgiven. See, it wasn't because he was it wasn't because he was on the cross that gave us salvation. It was the victory over death and over Satan and over all the other works. Let me just jump. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump one more thing. So look with me, First Corinthians, go back to First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 
1 Corinthians 15. And look what it says here, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, and verse 54. 1 Corinthians 15, 54, and it says, So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, uh, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. <laughs> it's swallowed up in victory. Then look what it says here. O oh, death, where is thy sting? The sting of fear and torment. Where is thy sting? And O oh, grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Verse 57 says, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and shout by yourself. Amen. So the enemy hates it, but also we need to understand that the blood has power to change our lives and everything that it touches. The blood of Jesus has the power to change uh, every life that it touches, that has been touched by it, the blood. So you can't come in contact with this uh, spotless lamb of God, what he did for us, and not be changed when it comes in contact with it. But also in Revelations 12 and 11, and it says, and we overcome him by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Look what it says, verse 11 says, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto their death. So we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. My testimony is I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I say so. My testimony is that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because of what Jesus has done for me and because on the cross for me, I have victory through his work. Amen. So when if you wear that cross, that cross is just symbolizing of what Jesus paid the price for us. So the blood, and I, I want to make this statement because, and it's a pretty powerful statement, but I want to make this statement that now that you're in Christ and death has been defeated in the sense that it just can't come and snatch you and that we have no more fear about it. And no matter what the enemy is trying to do against you, I'm going to make this statement. The blood is fighting for you. The blood is fighting for you. Shout that out. The blood is fighting for me. And no matter what is going on, listen to me, and the enemy is trying to do something against you, the blood is fighting for me. And that's my confession. And I'm telling you, if you had any understanding of what I'm saying, you would be shouting all over the place right now. So the curse through the blood of Jesus, through his sacrifice on the cross, when they nailed him on that cross, when they nailed him on that cross, when they put those nails into him, they thought that that was going to be the end of it. It was going to be the end of his life. But they didn't know that life, that what Jesus did here on the earth was very small compared to what was getting ready to happen after his giving up his life for us. And then on the third day, rising from the grave. Glory to God. So the enemy doesn't want you to recognize the full sacrifice of what he did for you. So uh, look with me in your Bible to Mark 10, 45. Mark 10, 45. Ah, no, let's go to uh, Philippians 2 and 6. I want to start zeroing this in right now. Philippians 2 and 6. And uh, I got out the NIV, if that's possible. <clears throat> uh, Philippians 2 and 6. And it says, Christ, who was... In the very nature of God, chose to leave the perfection of heaven and live among sinful men. Christ, who was in the very image of God, chose to leave perfection and to, from heaven <coughs> and to live among sinful men. He gave up his authority. He gave up everything that he had because he loved you so much, loved me so much, that in our sinful state, he was willing to give it all up that he could be able to redeem us back to the Father and get God's original intent working back in us in the, from the beginning. 
And so that was never to be separated from him or to have death. So he laid aside his own divine authority. He gave away his own divine authority and is faithful to carry God's plan and to, and to death and to bring us into proper relationship and fellowship with God. Ah, ah so much stuff I want to bring out. But um, in, in Mark uh, 10, 45, Mark 10, 45, and look what it says here. I mean, not Mark 10, Matthew now 16, Matthew 16 and verse 24. And it says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, he said, if any man will come after me, we know the scripture, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now we're going to jump off in just another little deeper area. Let him take up his cross and follow me. So Jesus said, I took, I, I bore, I'm going to take the cross up for all mankind but you got to come to a place of dying to yourself because you got to come to the end of yourself in order to receive the life that God has for you. And the problem with people today is they, they want to live to their self and they don't want to die to self. And Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you got to come, you got to die to yourself. So look with me in, in Acts uh, 30, 13, verse 29 through 30. So the cross is a symbol of Jesus' death. The cross, it is the reminder of his suffering for us. The, uh, the Roman cross was such a horrific, uh, torturing thing that it, they had there to terrify the people. And, but also it was the most cruelest thing that you could ever do to anybody. But through the cross, somebody say through the cross. I'm looking for Acts 13 and verse 29. But through the cross, listen to me, through his cross, we have deliverance now. We got healing is ours today. Forgiveness is ours from, and reconciliation back to God because of the cross. So look what it says in Acts 10, 29 and 30. It says, and when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree or the cross and laid him into a sepulcher. If you read the whole story that Jesus was there for three days, three nights, they, they prepared his body. And then the, the, the power of God came down into that sepulcher and rose him from the dead. And Galatians says in Galatians 614 in Galatians 614. And it says, for God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for by whom the world was crucified unto me and I do unto the world. So he says, I was I, God forbid that I should glory in anything except the cross, because everything that we have and everything that God is going to do is because of what Jesus did. Come on, y'all. What he did for us on the cross, on the cross. On the cross, on the cross. So the cross gives us direction. The cross gives us direction of the direction that we should go, the things that we need to do so we don't waste time in our life, that we can be busy about doing what our Father wants us to do. It is the cross of Christ that gives us direction on how to invest our lives while we're here on the earth. See, the enemy wants you to waste your time. He wants you to be able to use your time uh, in the wrong ways that, that are not being invested to help uh, mankind and to make a difference in other people's lives. So the cross helps us to give us direction of how to use our time to be able to benefit the most while we're here. And so uh, to say to make this statement that there's power in the cross, that the power of the cross is broken down into three different areas. Number one, that through the power of the cross, uh, their sin had to be lost its power. It lost its position to be able to continually hold us in change and keep us in bondage. Sin lost it. According to Romans 6.14, it says, For sin has, shall not have dominion over you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. 
It shall have not dominion over you, for ye are not under the law or under the power of the sin nature anymore. So uh, the power of the cross and all the things that it does. And I just want to emphasize a couple of things real quickly. That the blessing of that through the cross, that the curse that was upon mankind. See, we were cursed and uh, that the curse was working in us. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I am redeemed through the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. I'm redeemed from the curse, the curse that was placed upon mankind behind the sin of, of the federal head, which was Adam. Behind their sin, sin came upon all mankind. But now that through the blood of Jesus that was shed upon the cross, the power of sin has no more authority over our life. Oh, don't you shout right now because I might shout with you. Look at me. The power of sin in the mud. It can come. It can press you. It can, it can try to tempt you, but it can't make you do nothing. And so the power of sin has no more power over our life because therefore the power of sin also, the, uh, the curse of the sin has been broken over our life also. So now that I'm in the anointed one, now that I'm in the, the, the uh, body of Christ and the kingdom of God, now I can live a victorious life. I can declare my freedom that I am free indeed. And in whom the Son is set free is free indeed. So sin has no power or authority over my life anymore. Amen. Somebody said, well, that's, the devil made me do it. You are a lying wonder in the name of Jesus. The devil didn't make you do nothing. You wanted to do it. Now come out of you in the name of Jesus. Didn't make you do nothing. You did it because you want to. The power, the chains of sin have been broken over our life. And you should shout about that in Jesus name. Galatians 3 and verse 14 tells what Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us that cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Galatians 3, 14. And then listen to me, that we now don't have to be, 313, we don't have to be under the curse no more. I declare I'm living the blessed life. I'm living a victorious life. I'm living an overcoming life. I'm not living under the curse because Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Look at that scripture. Being made a curse for us on the cross so that you don't have to live under the curse and then being able to walk free because he took it all on the tree or on the cross for you. Look what the next verse says. Now give me the next verse. Look what it says, next verse. And it says, in verse 14, verse 14, <laughs> verse 14 says, uh, verse 14 says, for what then shall we say? Ah, no, uh, verse 14, it says that the blessings, come on, that the blessing, y'all jump to Romans now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was in Galatians. <laughs> I was in Galatians. Y'all remember that? Okay. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Y'all such a blessing. Thank you. And look what it says here. That the blessing of Abraham. That the blessing. Go back up. Can, can we do that without me? <laughs> go back up to verse 13. Back up. Go back up one more. Okay, I got to read it all over again now. Okay, so it says, Christ has redeemed us from the, from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us on the cross. That why? That it is written that curses everyone that hangeth on the tree or on the cross. Jesus bore for us. So we don't have to bear it ourselves. He took it all for us. That's why the Bible said that through his blood that was shed for us, we are the redeemed of the Lord. Now look what the next verse says, verse 14. And Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Look what it says. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ or the anointed one and his anointing might come upon him that we might receive the promise of the spirit through what? Faith. You got to do this by faith. Got to receive it by faith. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, 
Oh, man, I'm telling you, oh, I'm out of time. I, I, I don't know how it got away from me, but at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, at the, where I saw the light, the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was at the cross yes. that my life was changed. And it's at the cross where your life is going to be changed. And I'm telling you right now, open your heart up to him right now. If you have not received him, say yes to him today. Today, I'm sorry I'm hollering, but I'm hollering. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your freedom. Say this with me right now. And if you want to receive Christ or you got backslid, got away from him, you want to get back on track, say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart. And I invite you into my life as my Lord and as my Savior. Take the throne of my life and use me as your instrument. In Jesus' name. If you pray that, all heaven is rejoicing with you. I'm rejoicing with you. I got two books I'd like to give you. One is a paperback book and one is an e-book. You can call us, write us, email us, uh, get a hold of us. And uh, we'd like to give you both of those books if you'd like to have them to be as you start your new walk in Christ Jesus. Congratulations. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. I'm rejoicing with you. Stand in agreement for God's miracle working power on your behalf. Also, if you if you'd like to give and to support this ministry, and we would appreciate it very much. We thank you for being faithful and your giving of your tithes, your offering, your first fruit, uh, your special gifts. You call us at 916. Uh, you can call us at the office, 916-929-5725. If you'd like to talk to somebody, go that way at what, extension 1112. Or you can do text to give, 916-970-7900. 916-970-7900. All right. Love you. I speak blessings upon you. Increase favor. And I declare that your footsteps are ordered by the Lord as you now are walking in a revelation of the cross and, your, and who you are in Christ, that God's blessing will be seen greater on your life. Love you. See you next time. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen.